Hello, it's John Heaton. Today I'm going to re review a Stones album, um, Undercover from 1983. Now I did record, I did record a review of this about four and a half years ago, because I was lucky enough to be next to the one of the studios they recorded it in 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 Nassau, the Compass Point Studios. Um, uh, but the, the wind was terrible and I didn't have a microphone and it was a bit of a disaster of a video. So I thought I'd redo this album, even though it's not one of my favorites and uh, I'm not gonna be too positive about it. I did give it a re-listen in preparation for this review, um, but it's a bit of a mixed bag. Here's the front cover, which is among their worst covers, uh, really. Um, I've got the 12 inch single of Undercover. Um, actually, I've got the CD and I kind of rearranged the booklet so that this was the front cover. That would have made a better cover, even though it's still not brilliant. But anyway, um, I thought this album, which was released early November 1983, and I seem to remember it came out the same time as Paul Simon Hearts and Bones. Pipes of Peace from McCartney and Infidels from Bob Dylan, all within a week of each other. And out of those four albums, I think Infidels has probably uh, lasted the test of time, the best out of those four. Hearts and Bones has its moments, so does Pipes of Peace. And I guess if one's being generous, so does this, but there's not too many of them. And to me, it was a distinct drop in quality after the, what I call the trilogy of those um, late 70s, early 80s stones of Some Girls Emotional Rescue and Tattoo You, which are quite similar in style with Ronnie Wood, fully fledged member now. And um, obviously he would continue in the band for um, until the present day. But uh, I see those three albums as being a kind of trilogy. And then after that, the quality, I'm afraid for me, slowly went downhill, not only um, with the uh, the singles from the albums, but also the, the consistency of material on the album itself. So if I if I get, go to this album now and go through the tracks, I, I will say it starts off pretty strongly with Undercover of the Night. I think it's quite a brave single, tackling some thorny political issues of the day, um, such as violence and murder, murders down in Latin America and in the jungle and stuff, and quite a cool video to go with it. I remember when it first came out and I've heard it on the radio, I didn't like it at all with that, those huge drums from Charlie and the guitar coming in and it seemed to be, to me, to be de devoid of melody and, it, and listening to it again, it isn't a very melodic piece but it's got some energy and um, as I say, it was the Stones trying something a bit different. Um, it's not often that they're overtly political but they are here and in the video as well and I think it works for that reason. So pretty good opener. Um, then we get a kind of by, by numbers rocker, She Was Hot, um, which is kind of reminiscent of Star Star from Goat's Head Soup in the verse, but then the chorus kind of lets it down, so the tempo drops, and you get these silly words throughout the song, really. I mean, lyrically, this album is a bit lazy, and not to, you know, n not to mention probably pretty sexist on many tracks and just just a bit boring and you know I, I quite enjoy some of their raunchier material but uh, by this stage I'm afraid the formula was wearing thin for me a bit and I was a bit tired of these endless um, songs about women and um, you know I mean the third song on the album is called Tie You Up brackets the pain of love what the hell is that supposed to mean um, Anyway, on the plus side, She Was Hot's got some energy musically, some nice guitar work from Ronnie and Keith, and quite an amusing video, I suppose, particularly at the end with Charlie answering all the telephones. In fact, there's a good, uh, there was a good video compilation which came out in 83, around this time, which has not been released on DVD. It was a VHS thing, and Mick Jagger and Bill Wyman were going around this kind of Stones museum and picking out various... Um, videos would come on when they, they were prompted by some artifact in the museum or, and then, you know, there's little clips of interviews um, and Keith throwing the TV out 
off the hotel balcony and it's, it's quite an amusing video but I guess it hasn't been released because Bill Wyman left the Stones a few years after this and I guess or maybe they just think it's um, historically not up to date but anyway I found that quite a good compilation and it was the first time I remember owning videos like Angie and uh, it's only rock and roll and waiting on a friend on, on, a, on a VHS tape um, anyway back to the album uh, tie you up yeah I mean musically it's okay lyrically it's painful pun not intended wanna hold you is perhaps one of Keith's very worst tracks of all time along with little TNA from to to you uh, it's just thoroughly thoroughly uh, pointless song you know I suppose musically it chugs along but very weak lyrically feel on baby as a kind of reggae attempt at something or other as an instrumental feel on baby on the back of this um, which is even less interesting um, yeah an attempt at reggae not 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 a good one compared to some of the other more successful attempts at reggae like on black and blue with with um cherry o baby um, anyway side two begins with the best track on the album in my opinion too much blood and again it's the stones trying to do something a little bit different i mean they've done dance songs before and this is probably be described as a dance song but the, the fact that the horns are all over it um, and you know the subject matter of the song is quite quite novel for the stones they're not talking about women and sex and stuff they're actually talking about horror movies and uh, it's got an amusing vocal from Mick a good vocal from Mick and an amusing spoken bit in the middle when he talks about the, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, horrible wasn't it and um, I like to see something more romantic um, when I go to the cinema something you can take the wife to you know what I mean and so that's all quite amusing and uh, I just enjoy this track I think it's the most successful uh, cut on the album um, which cannot be said for pretty beat up the next track which is pretty dismissible I can't think of any good thing to say about this track too tough is a decent rocker probably better than she was hot you know good riff on the guitar but you know a little bit tired lyrically as I've said and I'm afraid all the way down is is the same it's a weaker track with some weak lyrics it must be hell the closer is okay but it's a little bit too reminiscent that riff of uh, Soul Survivor from um, Exile on Main Street uh, so this album was recorded partly in EMI Paris partly in Compass Point studios in Nassau Bahamas and then mixed at the hit factory in New York um, so nothing wrong with the studios they used um, apart from the band we've got Chuck Leval on keyboards Ian Stewart on piano and David Sanborn on sax um, so you know musicianship is high lyrically it's tired and they were to go slowly more downhill with dirty work and by the time they got to Steel Wheels the singles were all virtually unlistenable like Mixed Emotions and Rock in a Hard Place they were just doing stuff by numbers uh, although that album Steel Wheels had some decent songs but they tended to be the slower songs on the album so you know I've, I think I've said in previous videos my, my favourite Stones period is the 70s and, and the late 60s as well and I think this is the beginning of the end um, in terms of the Stones quality and I haven't really followed their I've, I think I've bought all of their albums since but I haven't really I, I don't rave about them at all the last album that I would say I would remotely rave about would be Tattoo You from 1981 so it's just my opinion not to be taken seriously and uh, thank you for watching we'll see you next time